Welcome back. This is a uh, part two to my story. So I didn't have people to talk to like that throughout high school. I had, you know, people who I so called my friends. I had nobody. So I was always texting. I was always, you know, I, I just got left undelivered like a lot. You know, I was, I, I can't lie, I was lonely. I had nobody to talk to. Nobody. And I'm just gonna be straightforward and straight on it with, honest with you guys. I started smoking weed when I was a freshman in high school. I started because it was truly my only escape. It was truly my only escape from my toxic home life and just from the world. You know, I remember the first time when I, um, the first time I, I, I took a hit, right? I started, uh, it was actually an ex friend of mine who, um, he, he asked me if I wanted to go smoke. And, you know, we smoked, da da da, after the sesh, right? Uh, for the following next day or two, you know, I remember I went up to him and I'm just like, I need it. I need it and I, I can't believe you know he's telling me you don't need it you don't need it and it was it was it was crazy because like at the time I truly did because I, I just felt like I was going insane but I was saying if you know what I mean I was in I was going insane but I was saying I needed an escape and you know revert this connects to how I had nobody to talk to so I had friends who who would I would smoke with and mainly that's all we mostly did was just smoke, you know, cause I had, I had the transportation and stuff like that. And so they had a place to smoke. And so I would really only get hit up to, to smoke. But other than that, really, I really didn't have people like that to talk to. And it, it's, it's truly a shame because I had so many, I had so many people that I knew and that, that, I kind of like surrounded myself around none of those guys, none of those people, none of the, even, even friends, girls who were like just friends, none of them took the time to like actually like talk to me. None of them outside of school, none of them. Like they would talk to me in school, they would laugh with me, but outside of school, none of them would take the time. And you know, it just, it, it, it was crazy. Because I, I was always there for people. I was always checking up on people. You know, there's people who were in my home room because we have we had a thing where you stay with the same group. You stay. It's like a home room, but you do more stuff with the home room over the course of the four years you're in high school. And um, it's just it's just crazy that some people in there who I thought were my 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 homeroom buddies who were, I thought were my own friends, truly, truly, because, you know, I was more connected to them since I was with them for almost four years. They did not even answer me. It's, it's, it's outrageous. It was outrageous. It was a very lonely, lonely time. It was a super lonely, dark time for me because, you know, I also had this other friend who I'm not in contact with anymore who I used to, I can't lie, he he was a terrible influence on me. But I truly, at the time, I didn't have a backbone. You know, I wasn't, I wasn't assertive. I didn't have a voice of my own at the time. And so we'd go, we would go and steal from, from, you know, the dollar store. We would go steal from stores. And, you know, I spent a lot of time around him, but he was just a really bad influence on me because he, there was times where he tried to get me to drink and I didn't want to. There, there were days, I remember my, this one time, my junior year of high school, I spent mostly that whole year avoiding him. And what I did was I stayed after school literally every day so I wouldn't have to go hang out with him. You know, the thing is my parents warned me about him, but I didn't listen. And also I wasn't, I, I, was, I didn't have a backbone at the time to be like, no, you know? Because truly, I was a very, very nice kid. I mean, I'm still a nice person. Don't get me wrong, but now I have more of a backbone. But at the time, he, even though like I considered him my friend, he was bullying me while being my friend. I was literally 
getting bullied. Like, he recorded me a lot to, to emulate me on social media. He recorded me a lot. Um, you know, he would just like, honestly, I'm gonna just say, I'm gonna just say this. I got bitched. I got bitched a lot by him. And I, there's not much I could have really done at the time. I didn't know who I truly was at the time because throughout my life, mostly throughout my life, I, I didn't know myself like that. I didn't know who I was truly throughout middle school, high school. I didn't know who I was. I didn't know the value that I brought to the table. Not only that, but you know, it just, high school was just such a weird time. I didn't really get to enjoy it. Middle school, I didn't really get to enjoy it as much. Elementary is probably one of my best times. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it a buck, but things just went downhill after that. And um, just like, Yeah, my parents, they were just super emotionally, super emotionally distant. They weren't even emotionally available. It's almost like, like my parents were there in my life, but at the same time, they weren't there, you know, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, growing up, I, I, I was super, for some reason, I was super embarrassed by my parents. I was just embarrassed a lot, just going, you know, just bringing them even to a teach parent teacher conference. I was embarrassed, but it was just weird. Also like my dad, there's a reason why sometimes I take, not even sometimes, but there's a reason why I take people's word so serious. Like if someone says they're gonna do something, I really truly expect them to do it because growing up my dad, he never really kept his promises like that to me. You know, he say he would do this, do that, do that. And then when the day would come, he'd be like, oh, you'd have an excuse each and every time. Um, I don't know if I already said this in the other, in the part one, but like my dad, he never truly had, has told me ever that he loved me. Only when he was drunk. He's only told me he loved me when he was drunk. My mom, like the first time I heard her tell her, she actually like, she loved me, loved me was right before like my first um, semester of college. And it hit different because I'm just like, yo, she actually like, when she told me, it, it, it hit me because I was like, that's the first time she ever actually told me that. Like sincere, like sincere as I got older, not like she said it maybe once or twice when I was a kid, obviously. But as you grow older, it just, it, it hit different. But, um, just sports. I, I feel like I already talked about this in the other video. Sports. Uh, I had to beg my parents to play sports, to get a job. I had to beg. Like, it's crazy. You know, there's there's this one time, right? I also have another story. There's this one time where I um, there was a school dance. My my high school held dances, but they stopped doing it once my junior years hit because um, just issues, just issues and. There's this one time I, I didn't tell my dad, obviously, I didn't tell him that I wanted to go to the school dance. And I went with that one friend who was a very bad influence on me. And I went and after the dance was over, I called him, I called my dad and I said, give me and my friend a ride back home. And you know, he's blaring on the phone, you know, he's, he's yelling, he's saying, oh, why did you go this, that? And he was like, you guys are just gonna have to walk home. So me and that friend that was a bad influence on me, we ran, we ran all the way from my school back to the projects. And honestly, the distance from my school to my, to the projects, I would say, hmm, honestly, I would say, hmm, I would say it's like a decent, maybe two to three miles that I had to run. Like we were running just to get back home and at the time it was winter so there was still like somewhat snow on the ground it was still kind of snowy but also like I remember this one time where I was in elementary school you know and I was trying to impress the girls so I was really I, I was running backwards I don't know what we were doing but I was just running backwards I tripped 
I think I sprained my wrist and uh, I don't know, my dad, he just, he had to come pick me up. And the minute I saw him, he just started yelling, like just yelling at me. And I'm just a kid. I'm like in fourth, fourth or fifth grade. He just started yelling at me. And my teacher's just trying to tell him, hey, you know, he's a good kid, you know, stuff like that. And he was just blaring at me and I just sprained my wrist, bro. Um, it just, it was, it, it's, it, it's outrageous because, you know, there was times where I was also working at McDonald's, you know, just collecting my checks, you know, as a 14 year old working hard because, you know, my parents, you know, they didn't have the, I, they, I, they didn't have the money like that. That's, but, um, you know, my parents would, would, they were asking for my checks and it didn't, under, it didn't click with me because I'm like, yo, I had to beg one to get a job, but also two. Like, I'm trying to buy the things that I asked y'all, you know, if y'all would be able to provide for me, but no. You know, it didn't make sense to me that they were trying to just collect the checks from a 14-year-old who was working hard at 14. Um, what else? I'm, I'm just trying to remember everything that, I, that I've that truly, truly been through. Um, let's see. Uh, I don't know if I can remember anything else right now, but... Part one, I pretty much summed up most of my life and everything that, I, that I've been through for sure. I summed everything up for the most part. But uh, as of right now, uh, oh yeah, my, my, my parents. Honestly, I would say they're my, definitely my first big haters. They, they, probably, they, they were my first big, big, big haters. Because I remember growing up, you know, I, I was very... I was very, I was much more, I didn't have much more mass or like, you know, I was pretty skinny. I was pretty skinny growing up. And my parents were honestly my first haters. They would always body shame me. Body shame me and my siblings, honestly, but they would always body shame me. And, um, you know, they would always tell me I was skinny. You need to eat. Yada, yada, you know. Like, it wasn't more of a... Oh, I'm concerned for your health, but it was definitely more of a oh, I'm bullying you, you know. And fast forward, once I started getting into the gym and putting on mass and muscle, they have been quiet. They haven't said much, but truly, my parents have been one of my haters for sure. You know, I, I throughout my life I've worked so hard in school, academically wise, to to impress my parents to impress my parents. And um, I never really talk about my, my accomplishments that I've done throughout my life. Um, you know, but I tried extremely hard to impress them. And impressing them, trying to impress them, changed nothing. You know, I tried to my best to, to get involved, to do things so I could just make them happy. And truly, the end result of it is I still never got that support, regardless of being that 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 good, you know, that good kid. Um, yeah, my parents really truly never gave me that support or the encouragement. You know, all they really cared about was me, just just graduating. I guess they weren't really involved ac academically. They didn't really care as much. But um, yeah, growing up, I like uh some of the like some of the stuff that i did academically was you know i rebuilt two playgrounds in my neighborhood i rebuilt two of them with a pier i rebuilt two of them um you know i went to chicago to 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 talk about to present a keynote um you know when i was in middle school national uh it was like there was a ceremony where people who you know, become citizens and stuff like that. I I did the Pledge of Allegiance and there's there's a plaque. There's a there's a plaque on a wall that was on that was at my middle school that was up for the longest time and they finally took it down. But one of my teachers, he has them. Um you know, I've done a lot of stuff like academically like that. You know, but at the now that I think about it, I believe I did that stuff for me rather than my parents, even though I was trying to do that for them. Um, you know, just being the good kid that um, 
yeah, just being a good kid. Like if I was growing up being a bad kid, still I would have seen the same results regardless being a bad kid or a good kid because they really didn't appreciate the good kid that they that they truly had growing up, you know. Um, in high school, I felt so much pressure where I couldn't truly be myself because of the image that I kind of was seen as or 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 praised for, you know. Uh, let's see what else. Yeah, I think that truly might be it. But for the most part, if I do remember other stuff, other events that happened in my life, I will most definitely, most definitely make a part three. But I appreciate y'all for listening. That's a little bit uh, about, that's about me, you know, my life, my story. I feel like there's definitely more that I left out, but um, for right now, that's about it. But if I do, if I truly remember more stuff, I will make a part three.